A lot of indie games tend to be quite short. It's very rare that I click onto an itch game and it lasts more than an hour, so I'm often left with a long list of games that take less than 20 minutes to play to completion. So I thought today that I'd highlight some of these. Most are full games, some are demos of upcoming games, but either way, I think they all deserve your attention. Hedgerow is one of those games where the concept is so cool that it makes me wish it was so much longer. The idea is simple, it's a mix between a first person dungeon crawler and a rhythm game. The music reacts to your steps, speeding up and slowing down along with your character. Once you get your weapon, you unlock the ability to fight monsters by following the button prompts on screen, clicking left and right on your mouse in quick succession. Rhythm isn't as important as speed here, they're more like quick time events, but they feel really satisfying to get right. You can find other abilities that help you in battle, like a dodge or an item that slows down time, but the primary mechanic remains the same. The art is really cool. It's got that low poly scratchy style that I love so much, and the way enemies react to your attacks makes it feel very hectic. The game is all about preparing you for the final encounter, a monster that keeps chasing you throughout the area. Once you confront it, there's no turning back, and the button prompts come fast and hard. The game is worth playing for this moment alone. It's incredible how good the gameplay feels, and the music really ramps up with an amazing track. I actually played this game a few months ago. It was one of those that I couldn't really find a good video to put it in, but I'm so glad to show it off. If you have 10 minutes to spare, I promise you won't be disappointed. Continuing the dungeon crawler thread, I love first person RPGs. There's something so cozy about them, so when I saw They Speak From The Abyss appear on my feed one day, I had to check it out. The protagonist Vanessa finds herself lost in another world, a world where the walls are made of flesh and demons roam freely. There's only a demo out so far that acts more as an introduction to the world and its inhabitants, but the full release promises to be an RPG. While I can't comment on what the mechanics will be like, I can talk about what's already in place. The art for this game is incredible. The designs are unnerving in a way that not many people can get right. I love the mix of 2D and 3D, my favourite being these weird 3D worm guys that stick out of the walls. The story seems to be about an event in the abyss that Vanessa has been dragged into as a sacrifice although no one seems to fully explain to her why she was chosen. She meets a number of different demons, some seem uninterested in her, while others are willing to help her, if only for their own motives. We also get a glimpse of a few different locations, the coolest of which being the frozen lake, with some really unique demons hanging around. While I would love to see more, what we have already sets the tone pretty well, and from what I can gather from the developer's twitter, there were some issues with corruptions and the demo ended up a lot less feature heavy than she wanted, so all things considered, I'm just glad the demo exists at all. If you like your SMT, but always wish to contain more body horror, then definitely keep an eye on They Speak From The Abyss. Ireland is a great untapped source of horror. Our history and culture are extremely morbid, and Our Lady of Sorrow by Dan McGrath is very aware of this. Set in Kilcree Abbey, the game is a found footage horror story about our unknown protagonist exploring the ruins in October 1998. It's a typical Irish autumn day, grey and dark at 5pm, and the abbey is covered in fog. Signs throughout the stone monuments talk about the history and legends of the abbey, in particular a story about a woman nicknamed the Lady of Sorrow who was supposedly burned for being a witch. It's said that when she went up in flames, her face became that of the Virgin Mary, and afterwards, the priest demanded her body be thrown down a well and the entrance sealed off. The horror in this game is twofold, the tape that you're playing and the story around it. The tape is property of the Catholic Church, and it was kept a secret from the public, only to be seen by specific people. Now that you have access to it, you can see everything the church didn't want anyone knowing. Ireland has a very complex relationship with the Catholic Church, and if you were raised Catholic here, no matter how long it's been since you've stepped foot in a church, there are parts of you that you just can't get rid of. I feel like a lot of horror uses Christian imagery because it's inherently creepy, but more often than not, it amounts to nothing more than set dressing. Our Lady of Sorrow knows just how creepy religious iconography can be. By grounding the story in Ireland and by tying it into our turbulent relationship with the Catholic Church, it allows them to use images like the Virgin Mary statue without it feeling cheap. 
deep. I'm not going to say much more about it because it's a short enough game, and you also don't need to be Irish to like it, but if you are, I think you'll get a little more out of it than others. If I had to criticise anything, it would be that sometimes the effects are a bit much. I genuinely thought my headphones were broken when I was watching the opening text, but maybe that's intentional. All in all, great short found footage horror that I highly recommend. Another demo that I really want to call attention to, Fear the Spotlight by Cozy Game Pals, is an upcoming survival horror game. The story begins with our protagonist waiting for her friend Amy in the library after school. When Amy doesn't show up, she goes looking for her, and spots her wandering into a sectioned off part of their school that had been damaged in a fire. So she decides to follow her, but once she finds herself inside, she realises there's more going on with this building than just fire damage. The gameplay is your typical survival horror affair. You collect items, find codes for locks, solve puzzles, and so on. The demo is quite short, and so far there isn't any combat. The first enemy you meet is a giant man with a spotlight for a head, hence the name, and you have to avoid him by crouching under desks and sneaking around corners. It feels very good to control. The third person camera really helps when you're trying to sneak by, although I do wish you moved a little bit faster, or even had a run button. Some of the textures pop in and out a little bit too frequently, but if you've been here before, you know how much I love the PS1 style aesthetic. I especially love the main character's model and design. She's got those big Carly Carmine glasses. Big fan. For a game made by only two people, I'm really interested to see how it develops. And I'll be keeping an eye on it for sure. It's only 15 minutes long, so go show them your support by playing it. Some games immediately sell themselves from screenshots alone, and My Friend is a Raven is one of those. A point-and-click adventure game about the last human alive on Earth, your objective is to have a conversation with a raven. In this world, humanity has been cursed for their selfishness, and a plague spread by the ravens has destroyed them almost entirely. You can call upon it at any time by going to the balcony, but depending on how much you explore your dilapidated living quarters, you might be able to influence how the conversation goes. I adore the art style of this game. The way the protagonist Lutum animates like stop motion, the heavy dark lines that make up everything, it's an aesthetic I'm very fond of. It's quite a bleak game, as you can imagine with a game about the apocalypse, but as you find the different endings and learn more about our protagonist, it becomes clear why he specifically is being punished. Honestly, I think the visuals will encourage you to play it more than my words ever could, so I'll leave it there. It's really short. You should definitely give it a look. Have you ever noticed how often lighthouses appear in media? They're an image that can stand for a number of different things. Guidance, rescue, solidarity, but they can also stand for loneliness, and in horror, that's usually the most common. The Keeper is a story about a fisherman who wakes up on his boat after drifting off, and decides to go home. On his way, a lighthouse that had been switched off suddenly lights up, revealing that he's dangerously close to the island. He crashes leaving him stranded. With no way to fix his boat, he decides to go to the lighthouse and find some help, and also discover why the light had been off in the first place. He finds a home with a garden, notes and diaries depicting a family with a strained relationship. He sees a person cloaked in shadow, but they disappear before he can ask them any real questions. The gameplay is very simple. You explore the house and piece together what happened to the people who lived here, and you solve puzzles to get to the end goal of fixing the lighthouse. It's a simple yet tragic story, and while I think there's one moment in particular that's a little more goofy than scary, it's still a very solid game. I know I tend to talk a lot about horror, but for once, let's look at something on the opposite end of the spectrum. Groove in the Grove is one of the cutest games I've ever played. It's only five minutes long, but it looks amazing. You play as this kid with a drum, and your job is to recruit a number of woodland creatures to play a song with you. That's it. No, really, that's it. No horror twist, the rabbit doesn't turn into a giant spider, it's exactly what it says on the tin. Each of the animals represents a different instrument, and you recruit them by following their inputs. Once you prove your musical talent to them, they hop or fly behind you, 
playing their part of the beat. It's not necessarily a rhythm game, seeing as you don't need to play anything complicated. All you're doing is following their two or three note rhythm for a few bars. Once you recruit the rabbit, frog, and bird, you return to the massive owl at the entrance to play with your ensemble. The art style is so cute, and watching the notes float out of the animals while they hop and bounce is amazing. Sometimes, you just want to look at something nice and peaceful, and Groove in the Grove certainly fits that. Another super short one to round us off, Red Handed brings me back to the good old days of Flash games. The concept is very similar to Super Hot. Once you're detected, you've a certain amount of time to clear the room of enemies with your limited resources. Regular enemies take one shot, and armored ones take two. But bullets aren't your only weapons. You can kick enemies into others, shoot glass from under their feet, grab them and throw them against walls. There are a couple of different options in any scenario. You also have an invisibility mechanic that lets you pass through doors and walk by enemies enemies, letting you get into the perfect position to maximise damage. It's not really as interested in being hard, so much as it is interested in being fun. The game only has a few levels, but it's absolutely something I could see being expanded into a bigger game, with more complex levels and enemy layouts. It has that flow Flash games have, where you just keep clicking next and trying to do the levels as fast and as stylish as you can, even after you've beaten it once. A great little jam game that I could see myself playing a few more times. Thanks for watching! As always, all of the games I talked about are in the description, and if you have any recommendations for me, please leave them in the comments. If you want to see more short form reviews, I post about 5 a week on my TikTok, and you can follow me on Twitter. If you want to leave a tip, my coffee is also below. And of course, if you want to see more videos like this, please subscribe and show your love in the comments. Thanks again, and I'll see you real soon.